Okay, everyone. Uh, welcome to Cube Day Singapore. Today we are going to talk about uh, handling billions of metrics with uh, Prometheus and Thanos. I'm Ravi Hari. I work as a principal software engineer at Intuit. Hey, I'm Amit, and I work as a senior software engineer in, in, at Intuit. At Intuit, we work on an AI-driven expert platform, which drives the work for all the developers at Intuit uh, and derives a modern development experiences. And this platform is powered by Kubernetes infrastructure. And uh, these are some of the metrics that signify the importance of the platform. Uh, our day in day out jobs is to ensure this platform scales as well as solve new use cases. Here is a quick agenda. We'll see the metrics evolution at scale with Prometheus and Thanos. And then we'll see different use cases with Argo rollouts for metrics, and then how we leverage metrics for AA ops and then how we are using metrics for Argo CD uh, metrics extension dashboard, and then how we push metrics for golden signals uh, to even best via Kafka adapter. So it all started like this. Uh, we have close to 320 Kubernetes clusters uh, at Intuit, and it's growing uh, on a day-to-day -day basis. Uh, and then uh, uh, as, as Prometheus is a de facto standard for Kubernetes, um, for the metrics monitoring and uh, uh, these uh, HPA use cases. Uh, we thought of uh, running Kubernetes, um, uh, Prometheus on top of Kubernetes with Prometheus operator, and um, we created a Prometheus HA pair, uh, where one of them is primary and the other one is secondary. Uh, and then we installed service monitors uh, that scrapes the data from services and uh, collects the metrics from the services and stores in Prometheus. So we used to store this data for 36 hours because of various use cases. And because of which, uh, uh, we had to run Prometheus with uh, an EBS volume uh, because it's a standalone uh, instance, uh, each one of them. And then uh, we cannot store data uh, in an object store with Prometheus uh, as of that time. Um, so uh, what we did then was we were collecting the data and then we use a third party tool for visualization. So we had to translate the Prometheus metrics into a custom metric format that this third party visualization tool supports. So we created additional add-ons like uh, the storage adapter for Prometheus and then uh, the S3 adapter that stores the data in the custom metric format in the S3 bucket, which then was leveraged by the custom uh, you know, visualization tool for us. And then, uh, you know, the metrics started growing and uh, the number of metrics that we had were overwhelming, right? Uh, and it was uh, difficult for the developers to always look at these dashboards and figure out what's going wrong or stuff like that. So what we thought of is uh, coming up with few golden signals, uh, leveraging this red methodology. Uh, the metrics such as rate of requests, uh, error count, and then uh, latencies along with CPU and memory utilization on the pods, uh, we, we kind of uh, looked into some few critical metrics for, uh, for the parts of their uh, applications. And then uh, we have written our own custom Prometheus rules on top of the base metrics. And then we started shipping the data out into Eventbus because we had a separate pipeline that reads data from this Eventbus and processes uh, the data and sends alerts for these golden signals. So we had to introduce a component called Prometheus Kafka adapter. We looked into the open source solution. Uh, we liked it, but it missed some of the features, so we had enhanced it. We'll cover that in the subsequent section. So, you know, we had to adopt to golden signals and we had to write the data out from the Prometheus remote write into Eventbus. This is additional use case, right? And what happened was we started with uh, some opening up 300 metrics per pod, and uh, eventually it went all the way up to 1200 metrics per pod that we had to scrape. Even that was not sufficient. In some cases, we went all the way up to 4,000 metrics per pod that we had to scrape. The metrics use cases have been growing, and the rate of requests for the metrics uh, has been growing, right? So uh, at Intuit, we have uh, seen that the rate of metrics in the last couple of years has been grown by 2x. So single instance of uh, Prometheus HA pair was not sufficient to handle all these metrics. We had to scale Prometheus horizontally. And when we looked out uh, for the solutions for it, we came across Thanos project, and Thanos can scale Prometheus horizontally. The way we have done this is we have run Thanos sidecar along with uh, Prometheus, uh, and then we, this sidecar will write the data from uh, Prometheus into a Thanos S3 bucket that is shown on the top. 
So, so what we did was we reduced the retention uh, in the Prometheus instances. That kind of reduced the size of the Prometheus instances. But we are storing the data in S3 bucket and retrieving this data for up to 48 hours uh, using Thanos uh, pods. Right? Uh, so Thanos query is the front end, and uh, Thanos query queries Thanos store, which, retrie which retrieves data from uh, S3 bucket and sends it back to the users. So we had to scale Prometheus horizontally uh, to handle all the uh, additional uh, metrics growth at Intuit, right? So this is uh, how uh, we started getting into Thanos. And once we have opened the doors with this, there are additional use cases that uh, came out. So one of the challenges that we faced was um, when we scaled Prometheus horizontally, uh, we started seeing uh, HPA not working appropriately. The reason for that is when we have multiple uh, shards of Prometheus, each shard of Prometheus uh, was uh, you know, getting the data from a given namespace only to a set of pods, because uh, the pod IPs is what we eventually uh, you know, derive from when we query from the service of uh, that particular namespace. Uh, and then uh, each pod is hashed to a particular Prometheus instance. So the data uh, for the metrics uh, is getting split, even though they all belong to the same set of uh, namespace. Uh, the pods belong to the same namespace. The pod distribution among the Prometheus instances is getting divided. So when the HPA metrics were getting calculated via uh, the Kubernetes API, uh, the data that we are getting is not accurate because it's not aggregating across multiple Prometheus instances. In order to solve that, we had introduced another component of Thanos called Thanos Ruler. And Thanos Ruler is a component that queries Thanos query, which internally can retrieve data from Prometheus, as well as it can retrieve data from S3 bucket. Uh, and then what we had done is we had uh, evaluated these rules uh, in Thanos Ruler, and we were not evaluating the Prometheus rules in Prometheus anymore. So that this central evaluation had solved us for the HPA use cases. Uh, once the rules are evaluated, we write it back to Thanos receive component, which puts the metrics back to S3 bucket. Right? So this is how we solved our HPA uh, issues. And then more and more use cases have uh, been uh, uh, you know, evolving at Intuit. So uh, one of the use cases, uh, to use uh, AA ops. AA has become a norm in the last couple of years, and uh, uh, we at Intuit started using this project called Numa Proj, uh, which uh, leverages metrics to solve for the anomaly detection uh, with multiple applications. So one such application is Argo rollouts. Uh, we'll talk about that uh, in detail. Uh, the additional use case that we have uh, come across is uh, Argo CD. Argo CD started extending um, its functionality so that uh, uh, use cases such as uh, uh, config map and uh, 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 config map pl plugins uh, or metric plugins and uh, new dashboards for rollouts are all now integrated into Argo CD. One of such extension is metrics extension. So users don't have to go to different screens. Once they install Argo CD, uh, they can view events, logs, metrics in the same uh, dashboard. So. Argo CD also started uh, you know, leveraging metrics from this Prometheus instance, right? So we had to call this Thanos query uh, instance uh, to retrieve the data. But if you see, all of these uh, different workloads are putting pressure on Prometheus. And scaling Prometheus is costly. So this is uh, something that, that is kind of burning the cost for us. Now we started looking at how can we optimize the cost and not uh, uh, impact Prometheus with all these different use cases. Because Prometheus has this remote write functionality, can we leverage uh, it in such a way that we can reduce the cost? So what we did was we uh, had separation of concerns for each one of these use cases. Uh, for the regular use cases, uh, we let uh, the cluster admins and the developers take care of uh, the regular read query path. Uh, which queries the Thanos and then uh, retrieves data from Prometheus because there are very few limited use cases for this, uh, the, the TPS is less. Whereas where the TPS is high, for example, for the AAOps use case, uh, we wanted to store data for eight days. And retrieving data for eight days uh, means that the Thanos query pods were overwhelming and it reads a lot of data from uh, the backend, right? So 
we had to add an additional component called query front end that kind of chunks the data into the interval that you want. We have chunked it for every two hours so that the uh, Thanos query uh, pods are uh, not exhausting, right? And it retrieves data back from the Thanos receive. So the remote write here would write data back to Thanos receive, and here we store the data for eight days in this use case for the AA ops. Uh, the primary reason we chose to store it for eight days here is because for any anomaly detection uh, based on our study that we found, in order to get 95% uh, confidence on that anomaly, you need at least eight days worth of data with 30 second scrape interval of time, right? Uh, and other use cases for Argo CD here, in order to show the live metrics, because developers will be mostly interested in live metrics, uh, when they are looking at Argo CD, they wanted to see immediately how the deployment went uh, and how are the metrics coming from the new deployment and other things. We didn't want to store for too long, right? So uh, we stored uh, in this uh, instance of the Thanos receive only for six hours of data. So with these uh, different use cases, we solved the problem uh, by splitting into uh, different pipelines, uh, but the source of all these metrics is through Prometheus, and Thanos has helped us solve these problems. Let's look at uh, one use case with Argo rollouts. So Argo rollouts is uh, a, you know, uh, a replacement uh, for deployment from the open source Kubernetes. Um, so Kubernetes in the open source doesn't support blue, green, or canary, or progressive rollouts. So Argo rollouts is created to solve that problem and is made available in the open source, right? Um, and then uh, we leverage metrics primarily to define when to promote uh, a deployment uh, from uh, canary to stable or shift it from blue to green and stuff like that, right? To make it stable, we use this analysis templates that run the analysis and qualify whether the new deployment or the new image that you have deployed uh, is running successfully or not. A definition of analysis template looks like this, and as you can see here, we are using a Prometheus query uh, to you know, query the data from Prometheus and ensure it meets a success condition, right? And the way it works internally is that you have a stable deployment, and once you introduce a new image, it creates a canary replica set, and that creates a canary pod. If let's say we have five uh, pods running for this replica set, and one pod shifts into the new replica set, that percentage of traffic gets shifted into the new replica set, and at that time, we can run the analysis template, which triggers an analysis run that queries data from Prometheus. Argo rollout supports other metric providers, but at Intuit, we primarily use Prometheus as a backend to retrieve the metric data. And once this analysis run is successful, we can then subsequently promote the rest of the pods and make the canary as stable. So let's look at a quick demo for this. So here uh, you can see the rollout definition. Uh, in this rollout definition, we are seeing that the name of the rollout is rollouts demo, and uh, it is running in metrics analysis uh, namespace, and there are five replicas, and we use canary as a strategy, and we had defined different weights. So initially, 20% will shift, and then run the analysis template uh, and that triggers analysis run. If that passes through, then the rest of the uh, traffic gets shifted after 10 seconds each time. We can also run this analysis template in the background so that at every step, this analysis step, uh, analysis template gets executed and we uh, ensure it is uh, up and running successfully, right? Uh, let's look at uh, the analysis template definition. As we have seen earlier, uh, we're calling this as a success rate. Uh, here we are ensuring uh, that you know this runs every 30 seconds, but uh, we, we can define the count and the failure limit, uh, other fields as required. Uh, we have just taken it as a base and simple thing for the demo as one. Uh, but you can also put the timeout on the Prometheus if it is not responding. You can you know, time it out and retry after some certain time and stuff like that, right? So uh, here we are querying for the CPU utilization data in this namespace for this particular app. And uh, we have defined the success criteria for that. Let's go ahead and uh, you know, quickly see uh, that we have already created this rollout. Uh, and uh, we, we'll just go ahead and update the image with uh, uh, a newer image so that um, the canary process starts. So I've just zoomed in here for the easy view. So as you can see, the 
newer uh, image starts getting deployed, and uh, you know newer parts are getting provisioned. If you look at the analysis template, this is the analysis template that we have defined, and you can see that a new analysis run got triggered and it is successful. That is why it started promoting the uh, pods uh, in that namespace. If you look at the value that we got from Prometheus for this query, uh, it is uh, 0.018, which is uh, lesser than our, uh, our target. So it is the success criteria passed and it started promoting. And as you can see here, it started shifting other parts uh, and uh, in, into the new canary and it will make the canary stable. So this is the uh, overall use case uh, for leveraging metrics with uh, Argo rollouts. Amit will cover the other use cases. Thanks, Ravi. So, <clears throat> yeah, I'll move forward with the uh, next use case, which is regarding AI ops with metrics. So at Intuit, we use automated detection of discrepancies and issues, uh, something called uh, anomaly score. So it's a valuable tool for developers to find out issues quicker than other traditional methods. And also it reduces MTTD and MTTR. Uh, so uh, in Intuit, we use Argo rollouts along with this anomaly score to automatically roll back changes if the quality of changes doesn't meet the required standards. So while implementing this, we faced several challenges. So uh, one of them was access to historical data. And uh, whenever this NUMA logic uh, infrastructure was querying this data, we had to scale based on the load. So uh, we had this in-cluster Prometheus, but it was already doing uh, some multiple operations, like scraping, compaction. It was also serving HP metrics. And it was remote writing to different things uh, and also doing rule evaluation. So we didn't want to put uh, another uh, read heavy operation on Prometheus. So we came up with this initial design where, uh, as you can see, we're pushing the data from Prometheus using Thanos sidecar to a S3 bucket uh, in the highlighted sections. And we created a dedicated pipeline for this NUMA logic uh, infrastructure to query the AIFs data. Uh, so in the S3 bucket, we are storing the data for eight days, and uh, we are using this query front end to efficiently fetch that data. But uh, here is some problem, right? Uh, because we are storing all the data for eight days in S3 bucket, but for AI ops, we don't need all the metrics, right? There are only few metrics that we are interested in. Also, this uh, huge amount of data in S3 is incurring a lot of cost. And uh, the way TSDB blocks are designed, whenever you are retrieving a, a particular metric, it would load the entire TSDB block in the memory. And uh, it may contain some unnecessary metrics that you don't want. So, so we improved the design a bit. And uh, what we did was we replaced the uh, store pods with Thanos receive. And here, what we are doing we are only writing the required metrics from Prometheus to uh, the Thanos receive, and we are keeping it there in its local TSDB, and we are keeping it there for eight days. Since the number of metrics are less, so uh, we can afford that, and whenever the NUMA logic infrastructure is querying the data, we are again going by the same path using Thanos query front end and uh, Thanos query. But this time, we are fetching the data directly from Thanos receives uh, uh, EVS volumes. So that is uh, much faster. And uh, there is a significant cost reduction as well due to the volume of data that we have now. So I'll quickly show a demo on the performance of this new uh, infrastructure. Uh, so I have a recorded one. Let me play it. So uh, as you can see at the top, uh, this is a query S3 uh, instance. That means that it is connected to the S3-based pipeline. And uh, uh, I'll quickly show you the store uh, that is connected to. So it says it is connected to a Thanos store instance. And we can quickly verify that using the IP. So it's a query in uh, Thanos query S3 store instance. And let's try to get some data for eight days. Uh, yeah, as you can see, it took around uh, four seconds to fetch that data here, right? And um, so, yeah, uh, let's try to uh, see the uh, newer approach using receive. Uh, we'll query the same data here. So before that, we'll quickly see it is connected to two receive instance, uh, and we can verify that using this command. 
So uh, yeah, let's try to fetch the same data here. And we click on execute, as you can see, it, it only took around 300 milliseconds or 350 milliseconds to fetch the data, right? So there is a significant performance improvement on this. So that was the demo on this. Uh, let me move forward with the next use case. Uh, so as Ravi was talking about Argo CD live metrics, right? So we have this new extension is uh, in Argo CD that uh, allows the developers to customize their key metrics and uh, show it in the Argo CD UI itself. Uh, so you can configure metrics like CPU, memory, and some HTTP error metrics, and you can directly view it in the dashboard. So it also helps providing a unified view uh, to the developers and identify any issues uh, quicker. So in the diagram, you can see that whenever there is a query from the Argo CD browser uh, UI app, uh, it goes to the Argo CD server, and there is an extension service in place which uh, communicates to different Argo CD extensions. Here, uh, that we are interested in the metrics extension. So when the query goes to the metrics extension, it uh, tries to query the in-cluster Prometheus to fetch the metrics. But uh, here we face similar set of challenges as before, like uh, the in-cluster Prometheus are already doing multiple stuff, and we don't want to add another read-heavy operation to it. So we came up with a similar approach here. Uh, uh, yeah, so came up with a similar approach here. So in the highlighted section, we created a dedicated uh, read path for this Argo City Live Metrics. And as you can see, we are remote writing the data from Prometheus, only the required metrics to a separate Thanos receive uh, TSDB instance. So uh, whenever this Argo CD is querying this data, it is going via separate uh, read path, and it, this path can uh, scale independently, and it doesn't affect the in-cluster Prometheus. So this is how it looks when you configure the uh, metrics tab in Argo CD. So you can see all the metrics in the same tab as your application. And uh, coming to the next one, uh, so we wanted to send some golden signal metrics to Kafka. Uh, the need here was to uh, send data to multiple Kafka topics, and uh, we wanted to support tag-based filtering as well. Uh, the challenges were uh, there were some open source solutions available, but uh, uh, it doesn't support multiple topics. Also. Uh, there was no graceful shutdown and connection handling. Uh, also, if you wanted to use those solutions, uh, we need to add uh, extra remote writes to Prometheus, and that would uh, add an extra 25% memory overhead on Prometheus. So uh, what we did was we came up with our uh, 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 custom Prometheus Kafka adapter, uh, which, ha which had a better uh, connection handling and all those things. Also, we added a multi-topic support. That means we are able to send uh, metrics to multiple topics based on uh, something called a tag parser. So a tag parser is nothing but, uh, uh, there is an image as well, okay. Yeah, so the tag parser is nothing but a collection of uh, labels and a matcher. So whenever a metric coming from Prometheus matches those uh, tags here, right? Uh, so it has to match this foo equal to uh, anything and bar equal to true. And that metric will go to Kafka topic one. Uh, and anything which doesn't match any of the matches will be dropped. So I'll quickly show a demo on this. Uh, so uh, let me play this. So we are using Telegraph to uh, generate some mock Prometheus metrics. Uh, as you can see, there is metric one with these labels, uh, uh, foo and bar. There is metric two with baz equal to true. Uh, so ideally, metric one and metric two should go to Kafka topic one and two, and this metric three should be uh, dropped. So uh, we are also creating some uh, local Kafka uh, instances using Docker Compose. Uh, and this is the same uh, configuration that I showed in the uh, slide. So uh, let's try to uh, start all these components. Yeah, let's start the telegraph first to generate the mock metrics. And as you can see, it uh, started generating some mock data. Uh, we are also starting the Kafka uh, as well. Uh, so uh, let it start and then we can start this uh, 
Kafka storage adapter which uh, starts accepting the remote write request from Telegraph. And as you can see, uh, there is uh, uh, all the metrics are going to the correct topic. Metrics one go into topic one, and similarly, uh, all the other metrics are going to the correct topic based on the configuration. Yeah, so that was the demo uh, on this, and I'll uh, hand over to Ravi to talk about metrics component at Intuit. So uh, we have seen certain use cases uh, that are critical uh, for us, but uh, in general, there are many other components at Intuit that we uh, leverage metrics for. So uh, here are some 15 add-ons that uh, we use at a high level. Some of them uh, are inbuilt and open source via Kik approach, and some of them are consumed uh, from the open source like Prometheus and Thanos, right? So uh, we have uh, tools like Active Monitor that uh, does synthetic monitoring of the add-ons and self heals if the add-on uh, is in a bad state. And then AWS metrics to check the resource limits on the cloud provider and then self-heal if in case the limits are breached. Uh, and then we use skip state metrics and then we use uh, uh, metric server uh, to fetch uh, CPU memory uh, data for the pods. And then uh, we use uh, alert manager to create alerts through GitOps. And then we use uh, node startup monitor and cost monitor to keep a check on the costs and uh, the startup time on the nodes and stuff like that. So uh, there are there is a lot of uh, uh, you know depth at which uh, we look at the metrics and uh, process them uh, for for our use cases. Thank you. Any questions? Yep, good. Uh, there is a mic in the aisle. Uh, thanks for a very interesting talk. Uh, I just have a question. Uh, I believe that the sharding rule that will play a crucial role in determining how effective your scaling effort is. So I just want to ask how was it designed, configured in order to adapt to the dynamic environment as communities in which the targets added and removed constantly at the very high speed. So how you design the sharding rule, sharding rule to ensure that the workload will be distributed evenly um, okay. among the Prometheus processes. Yeah, thank so, you. So uh, today, uh, our sharding is uh, based on a GitOps process. So we get uh, alerts if the instance of Prometheus or the shard, shard one of the Prometheus that we start with, if that reaches uh, some on uh, uh, resources, uh, we get alerted, and then uh, uh, we add another shard through GitOps process that creates a new shard of uh, Prometheus, and both of them starts processing them. So essentially, yeah. if, if your uh, workload environment uh, spins up multiple pods uh, very quickly and stuff like that, you might need to lower the threshold and uh, scale it accordingly. That, right. That's the solution that we have gone with. But um, do, you, do you evaluate whether the the workload distributed evenly, or is there any way you measure that? Uh, do you mean in Prometheus? Like, uh, let's say if there's a skill workload, um, mm. can we detect that? Um, we haven't uh, looked into uh, that use case because we haven't come across such an issue where one of the Prometheus instance is getting skewed and uh, stuff like that. We have not seen that yet, but uh, it would be good to look into. We'll watch out and let you know if there is anything like that. Right, okay, thank you. Uh, I saw in one of the other Intuit talks that you've been relying on Istio as well, right, in your service mesh. Yes. Are yes. you uh, leveraging any of the generated Istio metrics for your uh, use, point yeah. use cases as well? And if so, can you elaborate more? Thank you. Sure. Uh, that's a great question. So we use Istio primarily for all our service mesh use cases. Uh, and uh, uh, we consume a lot of metrics from uh, Istio uh, generated ones. And we have a different scrape limit because Istio generally emits a lot of metrics. So uh, the scrape limit on Istio pods is uh, very high. Um, and uh, the golden signals that we were talking about, it is one of the primary use case for Istio because there are so many metrics that Istio generates. We came up with some set of uh, you know five uh, golden signals that uh, we wanted 
metrics that uh, Istio generates, and then uh, you know get, you know consume uh, them via the event bus and alert the user uh, based on the anomaly and other things. Uh, two more follow-ups. Are you using it for the rollout? your Argo rollout, and if so, what kind of Istio metrics that you use for that analysis? Yeah, so uh, Istio is uh, EOS and Argo rollout. We use virtual service uh, to kind of uh, uh, leverage uh, canary deployments with Argo. And how do you maintain the balance between cardinality, right? Istio generated high cardinality metrics. Oh, we, we, we control it by the scrape uh, limit okay. in the Prometheus. Got it, thank you. Good, no problem. I think we are at time, but uh, we are available uh, outside. Uh, if any of you have questions, please reach out to us. Thank you. Thank you.